If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 48 minutes, Adam, Justin, and I do our normal introductory conversation. We talked about... Well, I don't know if it was normal this time. No, we got, we got a little uh, political. It yeah. was good. We it's we ye- talked about that Yeezy new song, talk. right? Yeah, that song yeah. by Kanye, uh, "Ye Versus the People." Uh, we got into it with that one. We talked about the history of minimum wage, how minorities uh, tend to they they think that they're going to always get their vote with the Democrat Party, and what that's starting to look like. So that gets a little controversial. We talked about Kim Jong Un and the disrupting nature of Trump. We talk about Pizza Hut pie tops. Yeah, these are new shoes that can order pizza for you. Those super are dope. Ugly. We also talk about a hangover, like preventative measure that this we all tested. This is gold. Maybe the most gold in this episode. You're gonna get anything out of this episode. <laughs> yeah, it's save that. Save it my life. Works. It includes activated charcoal and organic turmeric, which you can get from Organifi. By the way, uh, we are sponsored by Organifi. If you go to OrganifiShop.com. Enter the code Mind Pump, you will get a massive discount. Then we get into the questions. The first question was somebody wanted us to share some of our best tips to increase NEAT throughout the day. Now, NEAT, of course, stands for non exercise activity thermogenesis. That's all the activity you do that's not structured uh, exercise. Now, Adam does mention his favorite exercise bands. They're from a company called Bandits or Rubber Bandits, excuse me. They are very, very high quality. In our show notes, which you can find at mindpumpmedia.com, we will set up a link for you to get this particular product. The next question was, should men and women be at a certain body fat percentage before entertaining the idea of bulking? A lot of times people whose body fats are already kind of high think that they should get into a bulk. Is that a good idea? The next question was, this individual works a lot of hours, seven days a week, and then has seven days off. So it's a very strange schedule. Mm -hmm. How would we structure a workout to maximize his potential in this particular type of environment? Very unique. The next question was, you know, as we continue to grow and become bigger and more successful, are we going to adopt the policy of the University of Utah and put in a cry closet? Oh man, where we where Justin can go in there and just uh, th- this screams like you know something I would do. Scream his little heart out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, we are look we're closer to summer. Uh, we're getting very close to summer, and uh, that means a lot of you are going to probably want to get lean and ripped. And a big part of that is nutrition. Now we have two guides that talk about nutrition. One of them is the Intuitive Nutrition Guide that kind of teaches you how to get yourself to a point where you can eat more intuitively where you kind of are lean uh, because uh, your just your lifestyle makes you lean. And there's a, there's a process, and this guy talks about that. We also have a fasting guide that highlights different methods of intermittent fasting. Uh, now, that's more of a health tool, although one of the side effects of it tends to be fat loss. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you the intuitive nutrition guide and the fasting guide for free if you enroll in any MAPS bundle. Now, bundles are where we take multiple MAPS programs and we combine them together and discount them like 20 to 30% off. For example, the MAPS Super Bundle is a year of exercise programming. There's MAPS Anabolic in there, there's MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Anywhere, and MAPS Prime. So you follow one after another, and it gives it takes you about a year, and you get phenomenal results. Well, if you enroll in that or any other bundle, you'll get the nutrition components for free, the Intuitive Nutrition Guide and the Fasting Guide for free, this month only. You can find all of this at mindpumpmedia.com. T-shirt time! Give them away, Doug. All right, 18 reviews, five shirts going out. Hey, 18. Oh, that's, that's good. That's legal. Yeah, yeah. Well, finally. <laughs> <laughs> the winners Sorry. are Kuchia867, Ryan V95, Rach119, Weed Advanced, yeah. Whoa. And CJ Prues, We're all of you it. are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Get some. Oh, how does it feel to be back at home, man? It feels always good, feels home sweet home. It always feels good when we get back in our own studio. As much as I love to travel, as much as I love doing all the things that we get out and do, I do like to be back here with the boys. It's just something about our studio. It's like home, man. It's the cave. This is home. Home field. 
This yeah. is home. home I can't field. podcast without my pants on anywhere else. No. <laughs> it's inappropriate. No. That's the beauty of this, Which right? Which is just whatever. So, People don't deal more, with it. It's more know, natural. As well way. as we do. Yeah. So I'm really excited to bring this up today because, you know, maybe about, I don't is know. Is this going to be controversial? Of course. Uh, it has careful. to be. It was like maybe six months ago or whatever like that where we first got into the, the rap debate about uh, rap is so shitty now. And I told I told you guys that we sound like a bunch of old men. I got to do the sounds that they do. And I agree. Yeah. I agreed with you that there is some <laughs> shitty rap, just like there was shitty rap back in, you know, 2000. Sure. But there still are some, you know, poetic rappers or lyrically talented rappers that are out there. And uh, there's been some stuff that I've been posting on my stories and so that are the ones that I really enjoy and listen to. And recently, probably one of the most controversial rappers. Isn't that interesting? We all just collectively decided to start paying attention to rap again. And now it's turning into like, oh, wow, look at what's going on, you know, with the political climate and how this is all getting, you know, intertangled. Well, I've I never really stopped. That was yeah, that was part of the frustration well, I when, did. when we got. Yeah. When we got into these arguments, because I was like, no, I'm I'm listening. I'm not listening like as crazy I was when I was a kid, but there still is some really talented rappers. And um, I, like I said, I've been talking about them. But what recently has happened is Kanye and Kanye is by far the probably most controversial rapper that's out there right now. He's loved by so many and he's hated by probably just as many too. And for him to come out and I don't know if you oh, you would call this aligning with Trump, but he did a song that was mm. obviously supporting him. This is the one you showed us? Yeah, this is one mm -hmm. that just got dropped like th just like three days Ye ago. Ye versus the people? Yeah, Ye versus the people, right? Or Ye versus the people, Kanye. Um, what do you guys think? What do you think, dude? I Bro, think he knows what he's doing. There's a there's an interesting cultural shift that's happening, and I think this is part of it. This is this this particular oh, it's, song. It's going to be a major part of it. Well, he it, has a lot of influence. He, has a lot sure. of pull, he does, yeah. but he, it's it's just it's it's there's there's there was already this rumble that started happening. Um, relatively recently, uh, during the campaign, during the the presidential campaign, um, you're seeing a lot more minorities because what's happened for a long time, and I wish people knew, I wish history was taught uh, accurately in, in many respects because it's not it's not very accurate or they just don't talk about it. But for a long time, for a long time now, the 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 Democrat Party, and I'm not I don't necessarily I don't align with either side. Okay, I'm just this is just factual. The Democrat Party has for a long time taken for granted that they have this kind of guaranteed minority support. Like guaranteed they're going to get the the black vote. Guaranteed they're going to get the woman vote. Guaranteed they're going to get the Hispanic vote. The, you know the minority vote. Actually, Hispanics are flocking now to the conservative side, and, and, and more so before as well than than other minorities. But they were definitely more Democrat. But you're starting to see them now come over or move over to more of the conservative type of vote. And there's a cultural shift that's starting to happen. I think what's happening is, and I I I 100% give credit to technology because old media was so controlled by uh, by the, by those in power so controlled that if that they just wouldn't put minorities on TV who said or, or put messages that were counter to what they were trying yeah, to Yeah, and, and and not only that but now for decades you've had democrat run cities and states and we had a, a, a you know a minority president for 8 years and people are like yo man like nothing's fucking changing Chicago got more violent and more dangerous during the eight years that Obama was president. When you look at cities that are run by, and I'm not, this isn't, I'm not saying pro Republican, by the way. I'm just saying that the that well, they, those are facts. It's a they, fact they're taking for granted that they're guaranteed to get that vote. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they play that card, uh, you know, very very strongly. And but if you look at history. And this is what's happening now with technologies. You're getting a lot of minority voices, vo uh, vo voices coming out saying, "Hey, you know, just because you're a Democrat don't, doesn't mean I'm going to vote for you no matter what." 
Right. Like I want to see some, like see what's happening. And also people mm. are starting to learn. That's what I feel like the underlining message of this song is. Yes. Yeah. It's more about it's like, challenge. you know, just cause I'm just cause we're black doesn't mean we have to be Democrat. That's I mean, right. I mean, I think that that was one of the Bro, most powerful statements he makes in the song. Okay, I'll, let me tell you something. So if yeah. you look at the history of the parties, don't have to go back that far. You look at the histories of the parties. The Democrat party was the party of slavery. It was the party for segregation. They filibustered the civil rights act. They uh, were the party of the KKK. This is fact. This is not disputable. It's 100% fact. If you don't believe me, go look it up yourself. Um, up until not that long ago, okay, um, they, were the, they were the racist party. The Republicans were the party of uh, Lincoln. They were the party of ending slavery. They were the party that supported the Civil Rights Act that ended segregation. And it wasn't necessarily because, and here's what happens, I think people confuse or, or they think, oh, does it mean that these white people like minorities or that these white people don't like minorities? That's part of it. But the other part of it is if you look at the history of the Republican Party, Republican is the republic. They That's what it, that's where the term comes from. And what they valued was the constitutional republic that uh, America was founded on, which was based on individual liberties. So to them, it was like, I don't. You can be whatever minority you want. The smallest minority of all is the individual, so we need to protect individual liberties, and that was kind of the the what, what was behind it. And uh, so, if you look at history, that's what you see. I'll give you a great example. If we talk about a law like uh, minimum wage or or policies like minimum wage laws, minimum wage the the party today that supports raising minimum wage. <laughs> the history of minimum wage is crazy. It's dude. crazy. <laughs> The history of, uh, uh, or the party that tends to support raising a minimum wage is the Democrats, right? Now, if you look at, historically, minimum wage laws, how did they start? Well, uh, in, in this country, at least, um, during when we were laying out railroads- Wasn't it, wasn't it, didn't they put it to keep blacks from getting jobs? That's right. Wasn't that the main reason? Yes, why? it was, because they, in, in one example, and there's many examples, but one example, and again, you can look this up, when we were building railroads- uh, like 80% of the workers were black and there was a large percentage of the workers that were minorities. Now, uh, the white workers didn't like this. Now, the minorities, remember racism existed very much during this period of time, very, very much. But at this period of time, you know, when you're a minority and people are racist towards you, you have a bargaining chip and it's your salary. So you may go up to a, a, a white owner of this railroad and, and they may think, I don't want to hire you because you're black. Oh, but wait, you're cheaper. And so that was their bargaining chip. And this was for women, minorities for years. This is what the free market did is you made it fucking expensive to discriminate. You know what I'm saying? Like if you want to, you know, you, if, if you're really going to discriminate uh, against us, it's going to cost you, you can, you're going to, it's going to cost you more money because you're going to hire the white worker, but you're going to have to pay them more. And so this was their bargaining chip. And so and this is no good. This isn't good or bad. It's just this is just a fact. This is how it was. So the white workers didn't like this. They don't like that the black workers were coming and taking their jobs and and getting paid less. And so what they did is they lobbied to pass laws creating a minimum wage. So they said you can't pay anybody lower than this amount. Therefore, guaranteeing that they would get more work because now if you're a railroad worker and you're looking at these people and you are racist. And you see your black people applying for the for the job and white people applying for the job, and you have to pay them X amount of dollars, and you're racist, then you're just going to hire the white people. And this is what it did. It actually reduced employment. And, and this is what Do you has happened. By how much? Do you know? Like, I don't know what the numbers are. There's a are. great Netflix show that I watched that kind of depicts a little bit of this history. I can't think of the name of it right now off the top of my head. I don't know. Many of these laws that we think that, you know, that are, are pushed, that are supposed to help minorities, are actually based on a, a or, or were based on racism they were based on limiting and eliminating and, and, and preventing uh, minorities from progressing because again in, in, when you're in a free market system you want it to be expensive for someone to be racist you want it to be expensive for someone to be sexist and if someone is you know racist and sexist something that you can bargain with is how much they pay you and then of course as you continue working you build more skills and whatever, Things start to tend; they tend to start to change. But anyway, that was a, a minimum wage is a racist law. It started that way. Everybody knew it. That's back when people understood economics. And now today, they're like, "No, we're going to help minorities by raising minimum wage." When in reality, if you look at a, if you look at percentages, right, 
a, a larger percentage of minorities tend to be, uh, you know, more of them tend to be poor, more of them tend to have less education and tend to be disenfranchised. Nobody would argue that, right? That's statistics again. So you're going to make it, you're going to make them unemployable. If you're, if you're somebody that has low skills, uh, you don't have a lot of education, maybe you have a prison record, maybe not, but you're just, you're going to go get a job and the minimum that the person can pay you is $15. Well, the employer might look at you and say, well, you don't have any skills. You don't have any experience. I'm not going to pay you 15 bucks an hour. I'd pay you 10, but unfortunately I can't do that. So you basically, you basically increase the, the unemployment among the disenfranchised, which today, you know, you could say minorities or whatever, but really it's just low skilled. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're white, whatever. And this is true. Anytime minimum wage goes up, uh, unemployment among the disenfranchised goes up because now you're making it harder for them to enter the market because it's expensive versus eliminate that. Now I'm entering the market. I have low skills and all this other stuff. You know, hey, look, I'll work for, you know, eight bucks an hour. I'll work for seven bucks an hour. Let me prove myself. Let me gain some skills. You've taken that away from them. So anyway, my point with all this is uh, that the Democrat Party, and I believe it was under Lyndon B. Johnson, and there's, I'm not even going to quote some of these quotes that he said, and I think it's Lyndon B. Johnson. Maybe we can look up, look it up. I'm not even going to say what he said because it's terrible. A lot of lot of racist term terminology. But this is there, there's real quotes that were overheard by staff, and it's it's semi widely accepted that these are actual quotes. He came up with a plan to get the minority vote, and 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 so they started really, you know, advertising to them very heavily. We're going to get this vote. And so what's happened over time is they've gotten lots of things promised to them. Lots of things are going to change. Lots of things are going to happen. And instead, you've got, you know, it's worse. Like if you live in a in a poor neighborhood, for example, you know, we talk about gun control. Let's look at let's look at some of the most dangerous cities in in America. Um, some of them are conservative, but a lot of them are run by uh, by by liberal uh, politicians, and they've got very 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 strict gun control. But there's fucking g- killings and gun sh- you know killings like crazy, right? So what you've essentially done is you've got this single mom or this guy or whatever trying to go to work. He's fucking like, man, I walk through some of these streets and I'm afraid of getting mugged or robbed, but I can't have a gun legally. So I'm going to have to carry one illegally. But if I use this illegal gun to defend myself, I'm going to jail too. So you create this situation where, and they're starting to say this, they're starting to say this kind of stuff like, hey, you know, look at, you know, the the drug policy, look at all these things that, you know, you said we're going to help us. In fact, but what they've done is put more people in jail, made it impossible for me to defend myself, harder to get job, harder to get education. Look at education. The most people like to say, like, we need public uh, programs and public education because it creates more equality. There's nothing more unequal than public education. Nothing. Go to a school in a bad neighborhood, in public school. Go to a public school in a nice neighborhood. You, the most drastic difference you've ever seen in your life. One school's got metal detectors, teachers not showing up to class, kids fucking, you know, bringing drugs to school. Just, it, it's, it's, like, it's like a prison and it's extremely dangerous and some parents don't even send their kids to school because it's dangerous. And then you get you know, these nice neighborhoods. These are all publicly funded supposed to be, you know, like cool. everybody says, equal, and they're fucking terrible. And, and, and you know what the worst part of it is? If you're a poor parent in these neighborhoods, you have no choice because I can't, mm-hmm. I can't take this public money. They've you're, zoned it all. No, you have to bring, yeah, you have to send your kid to this school because that's yeah, where you live. That's where you live. And so a lot of these people are like, fuck, man, like, you know, we've been voting for you guys for decades now. And it's getting it, nobody. You're not helping anybody. It's getting worse. So maybe we'll start to listen to the other side and other people. So it's going to be interesting to see how much is now. No matter what, I I think that there's plenty of manipulation on both sides, mm-hmm. and this just happens to be Kanye talking about this one topic. And but and what I like and what I appreciate about rap and about songs like this, you know, love or hate him. The song is whatever. It's not like a great song. It doesn't have a great hook to it or anything crazy like that. But the message behind it, I think, is powerful. Yep. And whether you agree or disagree with it, it will. it's going to create... It's already... It's fucking trending everywhere, and it's Bro, ca- causing all kinds well, of... Yeah, I mean, it's... He's being contrarian, you know, on some... It's like he wants to kind of challenge the... Everybody has a thought process they're just buying into, but have you really thought about it? You know, have you thought about it hard? Have you... Th- if you looked into, you know, like besides like getting what you're getting from media, 
have you actually dove in and saw all the plays that are happening and like who's really making moves in your community that are making a difference it's like are you just accepting what's the common thought everybody ha- shares it's together? The, it's right. the oldest. It's the oldest game in the book. Politi- politicians have been doing this forever. I just watched a documentary on Hugo, Hugo Chavez, who turned Venezuela from a, you know, semi-wealthy, you know, emerging South American uh, nation to a, a place now where people are eating uh, rats and dogs and cats and starving in the streets. And he did th- he did this on a higher level. But this is what politicians have been doing forever. They'll promise you a bunch of free shit. Oh, you know what? We'll help you. We're going to give you this. We're going to give you that. We're going to, and instead of setting up the, the, the a situation where you can help yourself, you know, where there's less barriers, where there's more opportunities, you know, for you to help yourself. That's the only way for for shit to work out. When you hear a politician promising you free stuff, run, like run in the opposite direction because mm-hmm. it's 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 always in there. They're just trying to get your vote. They're gonna, it's in their benefit, not in yours. Well, special interest. This involved. is also too that makes me skeptical of all this as much as I enjoy it and the conversation we're having about it so that is anytime uh, politicians and celebrities align any message I don't give a fuck if you're pro it or against it I'm all the ways I'm always skeptical it reminds me of when I see a fucking supplement company put out a study yeah yeah, I'm saying it's it's the same relationship that I'm going to be skeptical well I'm skeptical of Kanye because look at what this is going to do for his record sales you know, like this is a move. This is a it might well. Hurt it might hurt it. Him. Might kill him. That's that's you the think argument. So? Yeah, I the, don't know. In, in I, the song, he raps about it. I mean, Ti is saying that in the song that you know this could potentially fuck him, and he's saying I don't give a fuck. Like I'm gonna say I don't what I was bro, saying. Me, I think his his sales will be better than he's ever. If had. you're if you're, well, that's a, that's interesting theory. We'll it see. Might, it might. It might. I think look what happened to Trump got elected because of the same thing. Like any any sort of like so many eyes, so many people are listening because it's it just. It hit right at the right timing, you know, to to, to challenge. Yeah, I Bro. definitely wouldn't bet against you on that. Bro. But I mean, this- if you're a mi- if you're if you openly support Trump and you're a minority, you run the major risk of being called a sellout. Or actually, if you support anybody that's not a Democrat, it's been like this for a long time. But you're seeing more and more of it happen because I think people are questioning things. And, and I'm not saying the answer is to vote Republican. I think the answer is to vote like open. Be open minded. Don't don't let don't, don't just think you got to vote for someone just because they belong to a political party. Because I'm gonna you, you know here's a here's a little little wake up call. Uh, many times they act the same when they're in office. So somebody could say one thing, the other guy says the other thing. They got they get in office, they do the same shit. Mm-hmm. So you got to look at what they're doing, not just you know the party that they belong to or the color of their skin. You know, I feel like sometimes people like you know like Obama. I'll tell you what, man. Obama campaigned against so many different things that he then supported when he was in office but people kind of gave him a a pass because he was so eloquent and so i remember i remember watching him uh as a senator railing against uh you know uh in, uh, in indefinite uh detention of american citizens without rule of law and which you can you can read in the national defense authorization act he also railed against the patriot act he hammered bush on those two things well guess who signed those things like several times while he was in office hmm. and kept promoting them Obama, mm. he was the same guy that's like, we need to label GMOs. Guess who's the guy that fucking signed laws making it almost impossible now to sue companies or to, to, to label GMOs if you're a state, right? Same guy. Mm-hmm. And those are just a couple of stupid, silly examples. But, uh, you know, I think people now are starting to like, I don't know, it's interesting. There's, a, there's an interesting culture shift that's starting to happen. And Trump is, he's the worst nightmare for that the for the Democrats worst nightmare ever because he does everything he's not supposed to do like like the way he talks <laughs> yeah and the shit that he does and you you shake your head and you're like wow this is what is he doing and then he gets more support or the media or whoever goes after him like they go after all politicians mm. but with things that would normally destroy politicians and for whatever reason he's like bulletproof on that kind of stuff yeah. and yeah, the, the old mudsling isn't really working anymore no and then like and then of course you've got like. You know, he'll say something like, I mean, look at what happened with North Korea. Mm-hmm. Like, that is a miracle. People don't really talk about that for a minute. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know that people realize what significance that is, you it, know, in the world right now. If it sticks, if it sticks, I mean, this is the first time North Korean president has come across, you know, the, the freaking divide between South Korea and North Korea and sh- shook hands and ended the, the by the way, the, the Korean War has been ended. 
it hadn't it wasn't ended before it was just it was just a, a truce like like okay we're not going to do anything but we're still at war type of deal and they've agreed to a few things we'll see if he follows through with it but this is the first time in decades and you know what you know what if if I'm a democrat I'm like fuck because you can say well you know maybe this was decades of of and you can make the argument. Didn't they originally try and put the spin that he's like in cahoots with them? Wasn't that like when he was originally going over and meeting over there? And so that was not what was not. No, what no president. Com- no American president has met with a North Korean leader. And oh, I thought in he decades. I thought he went over there. He's going to. Oh, he's yeah, going, they're going to, go to meet. But no, nobody. They're yeah. the most isolated country of all time. Yeah. And extremely hostile. And, you know, and you could speculate and say, OK, decades of sanctions and pressure finally broke them. But I'll tell you what. China put pressure on North Korea mm-hmm. for the first time in a long time, major pressure, because China was like protecting them. All of a sudden, they put pressure on them. Um, and uh, and he, like I said, he came over and and the South Korean president, so if I'm a Democrat, if I'm a politician right now, and I'm looking at Trump, and I'm like, we need to defeat him. And then this happens, and then on top of it, the South Korean president comes out and says, Donald Trump is the reason why this happened, and he deserves a fucking Nobel Peace Prize. That's what he said. He said that the South Korean oh fucking president God, said, said that said shit. That. Wow. Yeah, like it's so wild. If you're if you're a Democrat, you're like, fuck, we're dead. How are we gonna beat this guy? <laughs> oh my god. You know? So now are, are you speculating that some a lot of the stuff that was going back and forth with China and everything like that, with tariffs and things like that, has is a part of all this? I think I I think this is my speculation. Trump, he presidents tend to they tend to threaten and then do this that but rarely do they really do anything mm-hmm. right trump i think he comes across as the dude that's gonna fucking do some shit and he would say remember his tweets like everybody made fun of his tweets like he called uh north korean president what's his name kim jong whatever rocket, uh, rocket man, man. <laughs> and he's like i know you have a nuclear button but mine's bigger than yours oh my God. like saying crazy shit like yeah. no it's like we'll nuke your country too like it's not up like he's actually saying shit that you're like oh my god what are you doing yeah but that may be what what caused like you're off the rails that may be what caused this dude then there's some speculation that they had the, the mountain that they test their new nu- nuclear weapons is collapsing and that they're already like oh fuck we're screwed type of deal who knows hmm. it, the, the bottom line is it doesn't matter because he's gonna get the credit for it so yeah. and it's weird man I, I i haven't seen a republican get this much buzz around like minority support a lot of people say minorities don't like trump Mm-hmm. I'm seeing more support for him than I'm, I'm than I can remember for a Republican, you know, maybe all the way back to Reagan. You know, Reagan had a decent amount, uh, you know, especially when he when he ran the first time. Well, I'm sure that's downplayed a lot in the news. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is this is weird. But what to have think? a guy can like we, Kanye can we call him running for eight already? I don't. I don't. I, I, I do I, not I see. So. I don't see who, how they're going to touch him. I don't. Who are they going to put against him? Bernie Sanders? No. Oprah Bernie Winfrey. Sanders get they killed. Probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another celebrity, maybe. I bet you yeah, Bernie Oprah Sanders. Winfrey. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, maybe. Oprah said she didn't want anything to do with it. I think she backed out. Yeah, but I, I, I you know, I, I, uh, the thing about, the thing that I don't like about politics is that they've created this false uh, illusion of choice in saying you only have two options to choose from, and they actually create laws to make it, to, to, to keep it that way, whereas if you're another party, they make it very difficult for you to even get on the ballot. It's funny that we even have parties and all that stuff exists. It should just be like a man or a woman is running. Yep. I'm <laughs> saying yeah. they're running. They're, yeah. They don't yeah. represent a party yep. and they and put the, they put their views out there. I yeah. think it's so hilarious. Because you know, I mean, you always mm-hmm. see this too with presidents that flip-flop during their, their time of even being in politics, you know? Dude. Yeah. Because it's whatever the climate is. Like, oh, it's, it's cool right now to be not racist. Oh, it's cool right now to be pro this. Oh, it's cool to be pro that. And, oh, wait, it's not anymore. So now this... And it's, Oh, here's a good one. It's like, what can you trust? What you really here's believe a good one. in? Then? <laughs> oh, here's here's a good one for people. Obama yeah. in 2008, when he ran for his first term as president, openly campaigned against uh, gay marriage. Literally said, I believe marriage between a man and a woman. So did Hillary. And then, of course, afterwards they changed their tune after the polls were showing consistent majority support of for gay marriage. Not sure. So I, they they don't run on principle. No. They they at all. They they they're. they're popular you know whatever the populace is thinking it's just it's it's just it's a game it's a fucking game and and there's this this whole like don't don't like take it for granted like look at the two parties and don't think you have to vote for two one of those two or don't think you have to vote for like if you're a like if you're a really a a, a, you know if you're just like a christian and you believe in family values that doesn't mean that you have to vote republican Right. Like, don't Mm-mm. take that shit for granted. No. Don't, uh-uh. don't let them get your vote just because of that. And if you're a minority or a woman, 
don't think you just have to vote Democrat either. Like, look and see, you know, what's going on, who the people are, and, and kind of look between the lines because otherwise they got a stranglehold on us. Well, mm-hmm. And this this is what's happening. You have this other uh, there's there's this black woman on uh, inter- on uh, like you see on YouTube and stuff, Candace Owens, who is she's saying this and she's getting really popular and she's saying this like, hey, look, just because I'm black doesn't mean I have to vote this particular way. And she's a you know uh, a Trump supporter. It's just interesting. It's interesting that this what's happening. It feels like this kind of cultural shift where shit's starting to get. I I, I love it. I think that I think oh, te- I love it too. That's that's why I like. I mean, man, this is where again, it's me defending my argument from six months ago. What about that? Like, man, you cannot say like this isn't powerful music, whether you like it or not, whether you can understand it or not, like whatever. I mean, it's it's powerful shit to I talk won't, about. I won't argue with that. You know, it used to be um, during the counterculture times of the 60s and 70s that, like, rock was the voice, mm-hmm. you know, of uh, – it was like the controversial voice where you'd have, you know, artists would come out and talk about yeah, things that were happening. Before that, it was punk rock because before, it was going against, you know, the monarchy. Yeah, and, and now – and rap does this really well. I, I can't – like, other than rap, I mean, pop music never does this, right? They try, but it's bullshit. But rap artists have been doing this since the since the eighties and nineties, where they're coming out and talking about what's happening in their neighborhoods, what's happening in you know, God, they've been controversial for a while now. Well, yeah, I mean, that's part of what we all had a, a lot of love for Tupac and Biggie and stuff like that. I know that's what we we, we talked when we mm-hmm. they had they were NWA. Talking, yeah, they yeah, were NWA. They were talking they were a lot best. about this shit for sure. Yeah, yeah. and and you're you're seeing it with rap and comedians. Comedians are comedians play a massive role in uh, they're the ones that they can come out and say things because it's funny, but right. they can actually say shit. Yeah. You know, although they're, they've been under attack, they've been under attack a lot, which is very interesting to me. It's like the that's like the last stranglehold they're trying to like you know corral, and you can't, you know, you can't like comedians. I don't know what it is, but it's just like you can't stop these thoughts. You know, no. like it, it has to be expressed, and um, I that's why I love comedy because you can you can present something that's really thought provoking, but like it's it's deliverable it's it's in a way that that's receivable for most people no. so i i got to i got to transition us out of this this really heavy political talk right now because i just remembered something that i had seen while we were out in austin and it was a dm so i i apologize for whoever sent it over to me but i get a lot of people that are sneakerheads cuz i post my my sneakers and they're all, like they share stuff and it's cool, like different shoes and this dude sends me over or messages me like man you got to get them pizza hut shoes and I go, <laughs> I go Pizza Hut shoes. I'm Pizza like, Hut. what the fuck is that, right? So I look it up, and I'm like, get the fuck out of They're here. They're like made out of cardboard. Bro, they, okay, so they're super limited edition. I forgot there is uh, 50, I, I, know, I shouldn't know better right here, because there's, it's however many teams are in March Madness. I think there's 52, oh, it's somewhere around there. Don't quote me on that. But it's like 52 or 60, or somewhere between 52 and 60, shoes were made that's it that's all that are in existence but these pizza hut shoes they look like old school kind of like nike high tops but they're not nike they're made by pizza hut and uh, they're custom made and they have a built-in button to fucking oh 68 thank you doug so 68 of them that were that were made uh so you can order pizza from your sneakers by a push of a button (laughs) just because because they're they're linked to an app the app is then connected to a delivery at Pizza Hut. In the app, you have the option to make your, your custom favorite shoes or what like that. I mean, there's only 68 of them. They're going to be worth a shit ton. Oh, I'm curious to see what they're, what they're selling. How would for. you even buy them if they're so few? I mean, there's a there's always a market. They call like them Pie Tops. Auction. Yeah, Pie Tops. Yeah. Pie Tops. Yeah, oh, isn't that a great? Isn't that, great? that is great. It's hilarious. I love how marketing is getting so creative now. Uh, so do I. They're trying so that, to create that viral right, you know, effect. Right, right, right. I think that's. <laughs> I think it's clever, man. I think. I, I think it's really clever. What is it? Uh, does it? Is there say anywhere, Doug, on there? Like uh, what they what they sell for? They're ugly as fuck, in my opinion. Yeah, they are. Really I would, ugly. I feel like people are just gonna buy them to. to as a like collector, so I would do that. So oh, I yeah, would, they are I, ugly. I would totally oh, buy them man. as a collector, uh, just to say I have them. And what kind of pizza shows up? You know, that's all I want to know, bro. And anything you like, so you, like you preset like whatever yeah, kind so, you so like. Or the something. way, it, yeah, exactly. The yeah. way it works is you preset in the app like your your favorite pizza, you know, and yeah. then all you got to do is hit that button, bro. Think, of, imagine this: you're at a party. I'm feeling a pizza. That's, that's why it's cool. Yeah, you're yeah. at a party and you're like, hey, you guys want to order some pizza? Like, yeah, you're like here. 
push that button on my shoe. What? <laughs> Some kid keeps pushing it, you know, on your shoe and you don't see <laughs> 30, like 30, 30, pizzas. 30 pizzas later. <laughs> Fuck. I remember when shoes were all about can they make you jump higher and run faster? Yeah. And, and, and no, nobody cares that about that anymore. So you do you know what happened, right? So this is uh, kind of this is a cool topic to talk to Taylor because Taylor's into this even more than I am. Like he's the super sneaker head out of all of us. But uh, Jordan's is what really did all this. Like bef- there was there's actually a shoe market now. And you can, right. there's apps, there's Beckett's, there's things you can go and look up and see the the value of a shoe. Yeah. So all the shoes that I wear and that I have, a majority of them, okay, what is that? Wow. Oh, bidding on them right now. There's this like a, what is this, like a stock? Wow, this is like a Beckett or whatever, I guess. Yeah, yeah, see? $900 was the sale of the last pair. So, and th- this exists for like all shoes now. There's, there is, especially shoes that are popular or that people wear. They release these limited editions and people go out, buy them, buy all of them. And then they instantly, the next day, are worth hundreds of dollars, typically more than they were when they released. Mm. And, and you can wear them and still turn around and sell them for damn near what you pay for them. Sometimes more. I've got sneakers that I paid. X amount of dollars for, and they're two, three times worth what what they were when I first bought them, and and I can sell them at least get my money back or maybe a little more worn. So that's why I'm such a so why I'm weird. so much into it and why I collect them is because it's like one I get to have them and I love them and I get to wear them all the time, and then if I really ever needed the money for some reason that I need to sell them, like I could definitely sell my collection and make quite a bit of money off. Wow, of it. what other what things today do you think will be valuable? Like you know what I mean with like on a, on a secondary market in the future. Well, you know it's funny is and you've mentioned this before and I agree with you that a lot of this stuff, you know, will be different. You know because with three D printing, you, you're going to be able to make a lot of things, but it might we, make it more valuable. It, it could because here's the thing. Here's this. Here's the the argument to that is that. We already have this. We already have knockoffs of everything, and there mm-hmm. is a market for that. There's people that wear fake ass Louis Vuitton purses and shoes and things like that. There's a huge market in China. Yeah, and exactly. There's and they look just like it. The average person who's just walking by would never know. Mm-hmm. But then there, but there are still people that want the real thing, and that will pay that extra money, even if it looks spot on to the the fake stuff. So maybe when 3D printing comes out. You may be able to 3D print something that looks like something that's custom made, but it won't be the actual custom hand. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so because it's like I agree with you because like you could easily get a painting that looks identical to right. a the Mona Lisa yeah, or you could, Picasso. Yeah, you could fo- you could print that on a inter- on a yeah. piece of paper and yeah. put it in your house. But it wouldn't be worth. It's not going to be worth nearly as much because it's not the real thing. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. I, I, so I wonder what we like. What other things? Like I, I wonder if old tech. Yeah, will be worth a lot of. In fact, I no, it I agree. will. Yeah, like it, blacksmithing and you know, like old trades. Like uh, you know, if you're a craftsman and you you have a certain skill of like wood carving or you know, I, I just see a lot of unique opportunities there because it's physically made by a person. Well, yeah. So I think d- that, Doug, but, go, Google Doug this real quick. Google Doug. Google it, Doug. Doug. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Google it, Doug. Google for shoe. Doug. Google it. Uh, Off white. Guad. Yeah. Off white sneakers. I think uh, when I said old tech, what I mean is like if you bought, if you have an old Nintendo, the original, yeah, you know, that shit's worth way more oh, than you bought it. Nostalgia. So, like, what if you had like an old cell phone or old headphones or whatever? I bet go you down to designer money. sneakers that down by, yeah, right there. So, this is what you see now a lot of. This is just one example. There's a, there's a, there's a ton of these, huh. uh, these guys that take shoes like a style that already already exist oh and then they just do their own art on it or whatever yeah then they then they put their own twist and design into it and then it turns in because of them being a famous artist already so it's like if picasso was alive today picasso would have sneakers yeah in my opinion you know what i'm saying <laughs> like there's like and yeah. there's there's guys that do this that they're, that they're, there's artists or these designers that are brilliant and talented and have the new da vinci pumps they, <laughs> they now and so what i love to see what we're seeing right now too in the market space is a lot of collaborating you know there's a lot of that you see these in commercials now you never saw this in commercials sprite and doritos doing a commercial together you know it's like oh, that's yeah. You know, those are different, you know, and but they're not competing. And so there's who started that. I think I've, I have an idea. Oh, Taco Bell that. and their Dorito. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tacos was that was an interesting combo. It and blew get, up. Yeah. It went crazy. It went crazy. That's an interest. I wonder who was the first like the first big ones. I feel like it was them. Maybe. Yeah. 
I'm I mean, as far else. as like major brands, like yeah. doing one big thing together. I, like I mean, there's probably more examples than that that we're yeah, not thinking about top of our head, but that is a good example of that. And you're seeing more of that. So I, you know, to wrap up what we're talking about, I, I do believe in the future, even when 3D printing and stuff comes out and there still will be people that will seek out these artists that, you know, still collaborate with shoes and make them. And you know what? It could potentially make it more expensive, like you were saying. It may be- I think it will be because it'll be more rare. Yeah. It'll be more rare that you get that and, and more much more common that people can just print it off themselves. Mm-hmm. So it'll just increase the value of it. I think cars will be worth- I think a car will be worth a lot of money oh, I in think the future. A, self- I, dri- a car that you drive yourself. Uh, you know, a stick shift. A stick shift yeah, car- stick shifts will be almost non-existent. Yeah, oh, they almost are now. Did yeah. you know, so I have a friend that's a police officer, and he said one of the, we were, uh, we were this back when I did jiu-jitsu, and uh, he's like, yeah, one of the best things you could do to ensure that your car doesn't get stolen is buy a stick shift. <laughs> he's like, th- th- like thieves or whatever. They don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, because they're the young thieves are stupid. They, and they purposely. They, uh, <laughs> they've never even seen it. They're like, ah. Oh. No, they won't. They won't steal a car if it's. Th-. He said, yeah, it's rare, super rare that someone steals a stick shift because so many of these kids don't know how to drive them. Ah, <laughs> that's hilarious. That makes a lot of sense. I've never heard that. Isn't before. that funny? Yeah, but it makes total sense. Actually, most kids don't know how to drive stick shift. Mm-hmm. If you talk to most kids, it's like an old relic of a skill. <laughs> my gr- my girl can't drive a stick. <sighs> oh. Neither can mine. Yeah, that's yeah. isn't that crazy? Does your wife drive stick? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. She was into like hot rodding and stuff, though. I mean, she oh, had she's a badass. yeah, she had a Camaro like SS and all that, and so it was all with the manual shift. That's right. She drove that white Camaro. I forgot about red. That. Oh, yeah. it was, it was red. Yeah, red like T top. Yeah. Oh shit! When we when you guys were at twenty four, yeah, right? uh-huh. Oh, for I don't know why. And then that, that became my car. <laughs> I had that for a minute and was driving seventeen like a bat out of hell. What kind? What, what year was it? Um, it was a newer model. It was a newer one. Oh, okay. It was one of the ones that where it was like uh, it was the best looking one before it. You know they re branded the whole thing to make it look like the old. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like the very was last. Was it a D twenty SS? Was uh-huh. it? Fa- oh yeah, yeah, shit! Yeah, yeah. those are the fully. Yeah, those were like three hundred and forty horsepower. I think back then, which it doesn't sound like a lot now. But that was a lot of fucking horsepower back in the day. No, it got it well, got on it. Well, and those cars are lighter too. They they made those ones the newer ones lighter. Mm. So definitely that shit would get on it. I that's, like those. That's that's really cool. Um, so. How'd you guys feel after all that drinking that we did? <laughs> not, bi- not bad, right? Surprisingly okay. Dude, that is the magic fucking combination. You do activated charcoal mm-hmm. before you drink, during you drink, and then when you get home at night, you take a shit ton of the, the Organifi turmeric, which I was giving you guys, yeah. yeah, for the inflammation that you may get, right? And water. H- and how did you guys wake up? No, I told Katrina- like a th- champion. No, I told Katrina this, that, I mean, every, and I've mentioned this on the show, like, I don't drink very much because it, it just doesn't sit well with me, dude. I don't I don't feel good at all. And this week, we, we went out two nights and got after it. We never drink either. No, never. We no. don't drink. And not, not like that. Not like six plus drinks. Yeah, we went hard. Uh, and so it was us. so funny. Sal's like- <laughs> It was, it was, I remember when we were sitting at the that's that, my role, dude. Animals. The, that swanky bar that we were at and we're all sitting at the table and Sal's passing out pills to everybody yeah. and I remember like we're all nonchalant taking it we're doing I it know. I'm thinking like how weird is that for people probably uh, watching like probably so, looks like what, what yeah what are those pills people used to do like in the 70s they probably think we're doing ecstasy or something yeah. you know what I'm saying like all of a sudden everybody's trying and then drinking yeah we're yeah. drinking the night started and Sal comes out of his pocket hands over these dark quaaludes pills. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah we're doing quaaludes or something yeah. <laughs> no that's, that's like my role, much. dude. I, I always bring all the stuff I think we may need to keep us like healthy and feeling good. And charcoal, man, activated charcoal absorbs toxins, reduces, and this is anecdote. I don't think there's any studies on this, but I haven't met anybody who's done this who says it doesn't work. No, game changer for me. Dude, doesn't upset your stomach, doesn't get upset, and then you wake up the next day, especially when you do the turmeric. I wish we could get right? Organifi to make the charcoal. We should reach out to them and tell well, them. Well, I mean, we were using the turmeric afterwards because I figured you're going to have some inflammation because- a lot of times what happens when you get the, uh, that hangover, because we were still tired the next day because we went to bed. At, oh, you know, yeah. No, I was tired still for sure, but that yeah. had nothing. To, I didn't feel shitty. My stomach you didn't feel didn't sick. You didn't get mm-hmm. the headache. Yes. Because we, we got rid of the toxins and because we the anti-inflammatory effects. So you wake up the next day and you're tired if you go to bed late, mm-hmm. but you don't feel sick. Because yeah. normally hangovers just oh, oh, ruins it my whole ruins day. All day. Yeah, and it takes you sometimes a day or two to recover yeah. just because it's just, you know, you, you put yourself out from all the inflammation and just yeah. like all the lack of sleep. So yeah. What a great town to go out in, though. Austin is such a great- That's why we went out. I mean, it's just so inviting. It's like everybody's cool. You know, I there was a point. So how this was funny when we're, you know, I, I just tell Katrina this, that 
you know, I didn't realize how much I'm on guard and then like, def- like kind of like t- tense when I'm out in a bar type scene. And I guess it's, I mean, again, it's probably just, you know, all the years of growing up and bar fights and mm-hmm. shit and just seeing people, you know, getting hurt and well, stuff there's like that. people that go out just to do that. Right, right. You and know, I've been around shit. it. I've been a part of it. Like yeah. I've, I've, you know, seen that. And so there's still this, you know, that you can't help that. That's a pathway and a memory for right. me. And so, you know, when I'm in, like when I go to like a bar and it's like crazy packed and I'm in the urinal, like my head's like on a swivel. Like I always had this thing like some dude fucking hit me from behind and trying yeah. to jack my shit. And so like I'm I'm, I'm in defense mode all the time. Or if I'm in line for something like that and I feel people kind of rubbing up against me, I'm like, I'm on guard. I'm yeah, like yeah. ready to like defend myself if some shit were to go down because I've been in situations like that. Yeah. And Austin is not like this. Super friendly. And it took me like till the second night before I kind of calmed down and relaxed. And what really made me make this connection was there was a point where this guy kind of like grabbed me kind of abruptly on my shoulder and I kind of spun around and it was, he was complimenting my outfit. <laughs> you know and I thought? <laughs> that was just so weird. What's to up? Me. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Thanks. And he's like, man, no homo, man. I just want to say you look good tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> you had to throw that yeah, out there first. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And I was just like, okay, that was different. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it was cool yeah. because it just made me realize like, man, a, a lot of these people out here. And they're cool. Are very, very cool and chill. All the bars on Rainy and Sixth for you to be able to go from walking the streets back. I mean, that just does. If you, saw, nice if you saw that in San Jose. So there's cop. There'd have to be cops dividing the middle of it, right. and someone's be yelling at somebody doing some shit. Every time we've been out there, it's always yeah. been a. a w- I really enjoy yeah. the lounges. Like the was that Roosevelt's? I think it was called. Yeah. That was oh. a great lounge. I'm yeah. not a. I'm not super keen on the packed. I know. I'm. I noticed this about myself a while ago, and it's super true. I'm. A, I'm an introvert extrovert or extrovert introvert. When you wouldn't call it. Like I can be very extroverted, but I also don't like super crowded situations with that are really loud mm. because then I feel like it's tough to have a good conversation. Things tend to be very surface, which I hate. I hate surface chit chat. It's way less predictable. I just feel I just feel like I don't know. I just I feel awkward. You know what yeah. I mean? Like let's talk about some good shit, which you really can't in a in a situation. No, like yeah. That. I, I, I go somewhere between like kind of dive bar, but like that other place we went where it was like there's lots of games. That was there's, fun. There's outside, that was there fun. was an upper deck. Yep. Like yeah, yep. like I I totally dig that kind of a vibe. And there's a lot of bars like that there oh, which I was so I happy because yeah. but at the end though we went to that really really packed place then I was I was that like was horrible right. that was yeah, Connor's like, idea how about the <laughs> <blame him. laughs> Fucking, Connor. Yeah. <laughs> bad idea all Connor. his idea <laughs> how about that uh, vapor shot that we took yeah that's weird yeah he told, said there was like only six no no three he said three oh, okay so, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bottle that they they put a little bit of whiskey in it and then the machine vaporizes it and then when he pops the top you hear Makes a sound and then you got to suck and it you in. See all this like yep. white uh, steam. It's like a bong. Yep. It's like a bong Smoke. rip, but it's alcohol. Alcohol. Yeah. yeah. And and it and it burns a little bit. I'm pretty sure it's not good for your lungs. But you get <laughs> I a, didn't, I didn't get a feel, weird buzz. I didn't feel a burn at all. Did you? A little. You could tell no. you're inhaling something that's yeah. probably not. Great. I mean, I had the nice taste, the aftertaste of whiskey. Yeah. And but yeah, it was just like a, it was an interesting feeling. And then you get like a kind of a buzz off of it. Yeah, a little head high. A little bit of a head uh-huh. high. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it reminds me of if you're not a smoker and you tried smoking or something like yeah. that, or it feels kind of like that if you're not used. to What that. I liked about the scene there, and I don't know if this is common in a lot of places because I don't typically go to a lot of bars. So maybe you guys can can you know uh, let me we know go all the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, more than <laughs> I do. You're the party animals. Yeah. So more yeah. than I do. Yeah. Um, a lot of these bars had uh, like adult games, like. There was this massive Connect Four or Jenga, yeah. or there was this there was a fucking video game console where I could play any game I wanted from the like early two thousands or whatever. Yeah. We played Street Fighter, Double on, Dragon, dude. Yeah, we played Double oh. Dragon. We played Street Fighter. I, I beat everybody. Then we did the, <laughs> then there was the big punch machine. You know what? You That's know what? Because it was the Marvel character. Yeah, and then we had this big punch machine, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's this big. I actually didn't get a chance to hit that. I wanted you to because yeah, I was I beating everybody. Well, Sal was killing it, the, dude. He was the, doing this whole technique bro, that I, he finally told me what he was up to. But, yeah, that's yeah. funny. So well, there's, I got to tell Adam because yeah, yeah. you were off talking. So there was this. There's yeah, a big. Ru- Rusty and I were getting stalked by some chick. You know, <laughs> God. Yeah, he pulled me aside just for like a minute. And he's like, "Hey, let's talk business. Like, right? I want to hear. Let's talk numbers, right? You want to talk about his book and like shit like that." And so we just started and then whoop, <laughs> yeah some chick just like cuts hey look at me yeah it was totally like oh that. god how annoying is that yeah. uh, there was a couple girls that that did that to to us with like hey can you take our picture and i'm like okay so take a picture 
oh yeah, we're just here because we're modeling, and they're probably they're probably <laughs> listening by the way because I I subscribe them to Mind Pump. I'm like, I'm not gonna leave. <laughs> I'm gonna get two subscribers. Was, so that's, a, that's how we roll, right? Trying to get someone asked for a number, like yeah, let me get you. <laughs> they were sweet uh, here, girls, you know. They were young. Subscribe to our show. But they're like, yeah, we're models. We're just here. Oh, but we're smart too. We went to college and we did blah. And I'm this and I'm like, that. Just and this, sound that. themselves hard. And that, yeah, and I'm like. Uh, like my head's like, bleeding. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we were, we were talking. I, I literally was like, "Oh, that's cool. That's very interesting." They wanted some hey, of that li- silver fox. Yeah. I'm like, "Hey, oh. let me. S- I'm like, let me see your phone real quick. The Boom. You're subscribed in to Mind Pump. You're subscribed to Mind Pump. Thank yeah. you. But anyway, uh, there was it's a it's like this punching bag thing, uh, this game, and you punch it and it measures the strength of your punch. So it's like, I mean. It's testosterone land for like this is how guys can like this and it's brilliant too. It is brilliant. Yeah. You know what's crazy is that they have Draws a thing a like that crowd. and there's no fighting around it. Of course not because you're punching that, so you yeah. get to prove it, right? Yeah. So we set this thing up. I put my credit card in there and it, you know, thing comes out and I'm like Justin, come do this with me. So we, so I hit it and I don't remember what I got like eight eight hundred eighty or something. You remember like you? So, <laughs> this guy's like, I don't know. I don't, it was pretty like, much broke the machine. It was like, like eight hundred eighty four. Uh, <laughs> and so then Justin's like, boom, give or take. He's uh, like, boom, seven hundred something. Boom. So I know I hit it fucking hard too. Like, the whole thing shook. He's like, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? And I'm like, just gonna this is gonna piss him off forever. Yeah. So we kept doing this back and forth, back and forth, and then yeah, at the end, Sal's just damn increasing it, almost that. up to nine hundred. Yeah. I'm like, you fuck. Afterwards, he's like, he's like, fuck, man. He's like, how did you do that? And so, like, I was explaining the physics of the bag because I'm like, it's on this fucking pivot. If you right. kind of hit it downwards, it's gonna make that shit swing even harder. And the look on his face is like, you motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if there would have been an advantage for me because I'm tall and I'd be coming down. Oh, if you knew that technique and you have uh, leverage like yeah. that, yeah. All Hell those yeah. games, you can figure out a little bit. Yeah, of there's it. always a oh, little they're, trick. Oh, too. they're always because I was looking at it and I'm like, oh, this is swinging on this. Pivot point right Leave here. Leave it to Sal to break down the physics. Of I it. know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he, he imagine- said that, but he got like you know some insight from like some carny somewhere. You know, <laughs> 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 like here's how you do it. You know, yeah. I, some guy jumped in with you guys. I don't know if you. Guys- yeah. So there was this one dude whose oh. claim to fame in life is that he's good at this game. And he's like hitting, and he's like, yeah. And he's like, guys, are there every night, yeah. just waiting for somebody <laughs> to start. And it. Sal whips like, oh, him. Oh, he's doing he's it. like high fiving me all hard, like, oh, getting all aggressive. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, dude. Yeah, that's when I left. I was <laughs> I'm like, like, you can have fun with this guy. I gave him the Bruce Lee comment. I'm like, that's nice, but bag doesn't punch back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh shit! But uh, it was a good time. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health the performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use a coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from N8 Morris. Can you share some of your best tips to increase your neat throughout the day? Uh, you know what's cool? We actually, and this will come out probably, I don't know, maybe uh, within a week or so of of this show, um, an interview that we did with Ben Greenfield where we kind of touched, we did a lot of things. We talked a lot about this with him. And I think we all mm. collectively agreed, you know, now and where we're at in our lives and all the clients that we train that this could arguably be one of the most important things mm-hmm. And tips and that I've ever given clients as far as overall health, wellness, longevity, and maintaining you know a healthy body weight, it's quality of life. Yeah, yeah. Period. Right. It's just, and I think the message to me and why I I think I, I beat it into the ground so much is that I, I I feel like it's becoming more important every day. You know, every day we are creating these things that doesn't. Um, require us to get out of our fucking chair yeah you know everything can be brought to us now by an app and the steps and the movement the neat is is collectively just you literally have to schedule it now yeah right? and you have to make it it its own ritual and so what i did like and you bring a uh, ben greenfield up as an example what we talked about he basically just created some rules for himself when in certain situations he has certain movements that he does to I make love sh- that. yeah to make sure he gets like uh, a good amount of activity and exercise in and i was thinking about that i'm like wow i actually i do a, a very similar thing like and you know and i know you too adam had talked about like after eating dinner like you go for a walk or uh, for me, when I watch TV, a lot of times I'll get into the 90-90 position. I'll get into certain types of mobility movements um, instead of just sitting on the couch and like laying down the whole time. Like, why? And, um, you know, there's just certain things like I just feel more 
when I when I sit down, like my day is is done. Like right. I, I want to stay up, even if I'm just lightly moving. Um, I'm more prone to being productive, cleaning the house, like um, getting other types of exercising in. It's like a, a momentum builder. Yep. Now, NEAT stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So for people who are like, what is this? It's basically all the movement that you do that's not scheduled workout. So right. it's just your day, your, 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 your daily activity. Now, here's the interesting thing about this, by the way, because NEAT tends to be done throughout the entire day, right? It's not scheduled one hour, two hour type workout. It's just stuff you do out, you know, all day long. What's interesting about this is they've actually done studies where they've compared cardio, for example, and they'll say, okay, this group of people does an hour of cardio once a day, but this guy, this group over here does 30 minutes twice a day and they'll break it up. And what they find is the more, even though it's the total time is the same, the frequent, you know, uh, you know, activity tends to burn more body fat and, and give you better health. Now I noticed this with, uh, trigger sessions that we put in maps anabolic. Now, you can kind of classify it as neat. It's similar. It, it's it's kind of a workout as well, but it's short, eight minute, you know, little pump sessions that you do throughout the day. It's closer, in my opinion, it's closer to neat than it's to like a heavy resistance. Yeah, because training. it's not intense. Mm-hmm. You know, it's throughout the day. But you know, some of the things I noticed when I would do that was my body would get leaner faster. Of course, the muscle building and all that stuff. But here's the thing that is undersold that needs to be sold more often. When you move throughout the day, the thing that I noticed more than anything was the change in my mood uh, in my energy yes yep. it, it's like uh it's like a the best it's like a great cup of coffee except it's it's natural and healthy so you know if you're if, if throughout the day if your job involves a lot of sitting if you did a ritual like every hour i'm gonna get up and i'm gonna do 10 squats and five push-ups you know something stupid like that, something silly like that or for every hour i'm gonna get up and do a 10 minute walk around the building, right? So you figure you're, you're working for, let's say for seven hours you're working or eight hours, right? You do 10 minutes, you know, each time that's 70 or 80 minutes, but it's spread out throughout the entire day. And what you'll also find is after that 10 minute walk or that 10 minutes of, you know, five push ups and 10 squats, which might won't even take 10 minutes. You'll find that your, your ability to think clearly, your wakefulness, your mood, everything feels so much better. And I'll, I'll, t- I'll say this for general health, you know, frequent small bouts of activity are, pr- are probably better than less frequent, you know, more intense bouts of activity. And you see this with all the studies that they've done on people who live a long time. Many of them don't have scheduled workouts, but they have their daily activity is, is quite high. We were, we How were, crazy was it when we were talking about Ben and his wife? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Dude, but I had no idea. I mean, if when you see Ben's wife, she is in phenomenal shape. Yeah, she's she's got lean. shoulders to her. She's got she could see her bicep vein. I mean, she and she looks really good. And he says she works out maybe once a week. It's mm-hmm. because she's outside doing you know chopping wood. Yeah, they live on like a farm, right? Yeah. So she, she's carrying bales of hay and she's yeah. doing yard work like crazy. She works outside all day long lifting and pulling and pushing shit and she's got a farm eat. fitness I'm and they eat so they eat so so good that she looks incredible man mm-hmm. this so this started for me be- before i even knew what neat was like i i learned about the acronym in just the last three to four years but years ago i started to piece this together with my clients because it was so hard to get them to train like I trained or follow a program like I did. And it was just failing like crazy. I'm like, God, I can't even get these people to follow a program for longer than six weeks. You know, I got to start and I wasn't making an impact. And so I was like, man, I guess just like anything else, you, okay, well, that's too challenging. It's too much. I need to simplify this. And I don't remember the trainer or the person that I met that gave me this idea way back when, but I started to implement it with all my clients. And I'd give them like this little, this, this little sticker pack and, you know, I normally give like pick like two or three colors on there. So like a blue one a, a, and there'd be these little circles, you know, the size of like a nickel. And I would have them put it in certain places in their house, like one on the refrigerator, one on the TV, one, like in just random places that I knew where they'd be sedentary or consuming or doing things like that. And then I would give them little things to do and not a lot. It would be like when you go to the refrigerator and you see that blue dot, you owe me 20 bodyweight squats. 
That's it. Just knock out 20 body weight squats. Or when you sit down at the dinner table and in your eyes view, you see that dot again, make sure you go for a walk for 30 minutes. Like I'd give them these little mm-hmm. tasks for them to do that I knew that were really simple things to accomplish. I did not want to say and Ben and Ben gives some ones that are, I mean, he's like 30 burpees and this and that. I'm like, well, <laughs> I know my clients wouldn't do 30 burpees in their kitchen every morning. Do 20 with, squats right. inside the airplane. Yeah. Right. So I started off really easy with some things like that. And that's where this all started. And then, you know, I started to play around with that myself. See, I always loved training and lifting, so I didn't really feel like I had to start doing this until I got older and we got into a job where we sit and talk on a microphone all the time. Now, this is really important. And and people know, too, that I'm, I'm, I talk about the Fitbit a lot and how and this is how I really use this tool is I know that what looks like a active or a not active day for me. So I easily should be able to hit about 10,000 steps just by being pretty active, but a lot of times it could be as low as two or 3,000 steps just because, shit, you know, we, I got sucked into the computer, we had to record three episodes in a row, and I was in a car, and so I just haven't fucking moved. And so this is why I love to wear the Fitbit is for this reason right here. It's just to give me that feedback at the end of the day. I'll look at it at 6 o'clock at night, and it's like, oh, my God, I've only taken 2,000 steps. Mm-hmm. If that's the case... It, it is mandatory for me to go on a one-hour walk. Now, a lot of times Katrina comes and does it with me, and so it's a great time that we can talk and and her and I bond while I also knock out some neat. But for sure, it's a, it's a rule that I've put on myself that if I got so busy throughout the day, I didn't make my workout, I didn't do this, and my steps are that low, I need to most certainly go out and take a walk and do something like that. Think about it this way. If, if there was like a little uh, a gauge that you had attached to your body that showed you positive and negative and positive being you know burning body fat building muscle becoming more fit becoming more healthy and then the negative was the opposite of all those things right and so throughout the day you could watch this gauge you have uh it's it's there's a ceiling to how far you can move it in the positive like you you know a hard workout will move it about as high as it's going to go in terms of building muscle and burning body fat but in terms of the negative the the ceiling is i mean the limit is way 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 lower and what i mean by that is if you lay around in bed all day long, you will lose, this, just for one day, you lose a, a significant amount of strength, of health, of fitness, of wellness, more so than if you were super active all day long and, and how much positive. So remember that. You can, you can swing your body in the negative very easy and very quickly. And if you don't believe me, like I've, I've used this example before, put your arm in a cast for a week. That's it. Just one week, put your arm in a cast. Take that cast off and look and see what your arm looks like. You will lose way more muscle than you could have built in months, you know, and percentage wise. So that negative happens. Uh, it can happen very, very quickly. And so when you think of it that way, think of it also this way. Rather than doing one or two hour hard workout and then the rest of the day being totally sedentary, where you're going to swing that gauge to the positive a little bit. But now because you're so sedentary all day long, it goes down the negative and it just keeps going down lower and lower and lower move throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And that's why these frequent bouts of activity seem to be far more effective than if you took all that time and just did it all at once. So again, if you walk for 10 minutes every hour for eight hours, that's 80 minutes of of walking, you'll probably get more of a general health benefit and maybe even a fat loss benefit than you did if you just did 80 minute walk all at once. Because you're countering that with sitting for another nine hours versus the 10 minutes every hour, you're moving that gauge up in the positive throughout the day. And I've noticed this with working out and we can, we can extrapolate this and move it towards, you know, we talk about resistance training, building muscle. We talk about trigger sessions. It just seems to be the case. Now, in terms of how to increase your neat, here's another really easy one. Just make, we've heard this so many times, right? Park your car further in the parking lot, take the stairs instead of the elevator. Like, Silly things like this throughout the day do make a difference. And it's mm-hmm. not just the calorie burn. Because I know when people think, oh, well, how many calories could that possibly burn? Well, I mean, we could play that game too. No, it's stimulus for your muscles. It's for your whole body. Yeah. You know, so when you get to work, park far away. When you, you know, go to the grocery, when you're going to a department store, take the stairs. Like, do these little things throughout the day, and those things make a big difference. Huge difference. When you dude. do them every single day. They, they add up. I mean, something right now I'm doing, and I know, again, the trigger sessions is not considered neat. It'll be considered somewhat exercising, but I, 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 I lean towards more being like neat because it is so easy. Uh, right now, you've got the Sharks and the Warriors in playoffs, so that's like just an incredible time for me to be watching TV or sitting on my ass. 
So, um, and we don't talk about this a lot. A lot of people don't know this. We have, in my opinion, the rubber bandits are the are the best bands in the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, it comes with a door hinge thing, Super and it comes quality. comes with a handle and a, a couple different band or three different band sizes and uh, resistance. And I keep those literally all the time hung over this door that's a closet right down by my downstairs TV. And when I'm sitting for three hours watching playoff games and things like that, just every commercial break or, you know, at halftime, I get up and I get these yeah. little mm-hmm. trigger sessions that I get in between. And man, it makes a fucking huge difference than just because what people don't attribute is that. So let's say when you are sitting down and you're just resting on the couch, you start your heart rate starts to come real low, right? You get so you get relaxed, settles down. And then you get up and you go do like a trigger session that literally is three minutes during the commercial. Well, yeah, you get the little bit of the calorie burn right there that you burnt that in that you know three minutes, which is not huge. And people can be like, oh, what, how much is that? Like you said, Sal, we can get into the whole semantics of it, whatever. But then you also sit down and your body still is working. The heart rate is still elevated. It's got to work to bring it back down. There's an after effect of that that's super beneficial too. Dude, I, I love using it as... I, I was on a, a podcast a long time ago that was about um, improving cognitive function and they interviewed me about exercise. And I said, hey, one of the best things you could do, if you're especially if you're in a creative field, field where you're having to come up with ideas or you're writing blogs or you're writing content or you're a programmer... One of the best things you can do to stimulate your your mind is to get up and move for five to ten minutes, and then sit back down and watch what happens. Mm-hmm. It was it's what's why I do that every time I write. Every time I write, if I find I'm stuck, I get up, either go for a walk or do a trigger session, and it's like I took a nootropic or I took something, and I sit back down. I'm more awake and I'm sharper. You could do this before a talk. You know, if you have a speech you're going to give before you do your schoolwork. If you're in college. And you're fucking studying your ass off, and you know you have about final coming up. Yeah, yeah. and you got three hours of studying to go. Every thirty minutes, every forty minutes, or whatever, do five minutes of exercise. Sit back down and watch how much more information you're able to retain uh, that you're that you're studying, you're learning. It it makes a massive difference, and this is really what it's what it's all about. And you you just structure this throughout the day. At worst, at worst, you can literally just set an alarm on your phone. And four times a day it goes off, and you know when it goes off, you need to move for five minutes, and you can your choice mm-hmm. do what you want to do for four minutes. At worst, you can do that. And what ends up happening over time is it's like anything, like nutrition or like anything else. You have to schedule it, you have to track it, and it eventually kind of becomes a part of your, you know, just what you do. And and now I find myself doing that more often. Like when we're having a meeting and we're sitting with you know our marketing team for three hours, I find myself now. St- if I start to find that I can't retain information or shit, I'm starting to lose focus. I stand up, I stretch, I move, and it just become a part of my, you know, part of my routine. Yep. Next question is from Stephen Nass. Should men and women be at a certain body fat percentage range before entertaining the idea of bulking? In a previous episode, you guys indicated a guy at 18% body fat has no business bulking and that... Being in a caloric surplus at that body fat could actually be catabolic. Can you discuss this further? I would be interested in the advice you would give a male who is 18% body fat and whose goal is to build a muscular physique. Well, First, I, I want to correct not, Yeah, cat, it doesn't mean you're going to be catabolic. No. It doesn't mean that at all. If you're in a surplus, you're anabolic. So yeah. Anabolic doesn't always necessarily mean you're building muscle, right? It could mean you're putting fat on your body too. Yeah. So. I mean, if you're, let's say you're, if you're at 18% body fat, which isn't super low, but not super high either, and you are trying, let's say you're in a, a power lifter or you're a strength athlete and there's no weight class, will bulking benefit you? Probably. You're going to get stronger. You're going to put on more muscle. You put on more body fat too. But most people, and this is more of a problem for men than women. Like most guys, when they, they want to put on muscle, and size, I don't think they realize how much bigger they look when they're leaner. So they just they, they stay in this like bulk season forever where their body fat starts to creep above 20%. They're like, no, 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 I'm bulking right now. And it's like, you you would actually, you would do better if you got a little leaner first and then tried to put on size because you would look a lot bigger. You know, that's always been my approach. Well, it, it just depends on, like you said, I think you hit it perfect, which is if you're a power lifter, you don't care if you're, you don't mind carrying a little bit extra body fat percentage on you. You're happy with that weight, then 
there, then that's different, right? But if you're somebody who's coming to me and you're like, your goals are aesthetics, like you're like, I want to look a certain way and you're trying to be shredded, you want to be ripped, I want to look like a magazine. If that's what your goal is and you're considering bulking and you're 18% body fat, yeah, no, I don't think that's a smart strategy at all. Mm-hmm. I think it's a bad strategy yeah, completely. Yeah. But if you were powerlifting or a lineman or I don't know, a lot, there's a lot of sports and things that you could be where it's advantageous to be kind of thick and mm-hmm. it's better that you're probably thick and maybe a little bit uh, more body fat than to be super super lean so it really depends on the person's goal and i think we wanted to address that the whole 18 percent body fat and being silly trying to bulk like that if your main goal is looks and since that's a majority of people that are talking about body fat percentage. I don't ever have power lifters talk to me about body body fat percentage. I've never had a power lifter no, go I don't like, give a shit. No. oh, I'm like this at 16. It's about the metrics of what they're putting up. Yeah, they have to, I mean, they have to make a weight class and so that's their concern but they could give two shits if they're up or down two or three percent body fat if, they're, if their strength is going up and so mm-hmm. that person, sure, if you want to bulk but most people that use terms like body fat percentage and bulking are bodybuilder or aspiring competitors or people or that just are interested in aesthetics. Yeah, that are interested in looking a certain hey, way. Here's something else you want to also consider. If you're you do lose some of that muscle building effect when you stay in a surplus consistently for a long time. So one of the most anabolic things that you can ever do where you notice like a huge return is if you go in a deficit for a little while and then you go back on your bulk. Right. I mean, your body rebounds and like uh, if you've never dieted for a long period of time and then gone and tried to build muscle, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you've done it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like the most muscle building anabolic feeling you'll ever have in your entire life is when you come out of a relatively long period of being in a calorie deficit and then you throw in some extra food and calories and then go do your workout. It feels incredible. I've I've never taken a a pro hormone or designer steroid that can compare. Right. You know, after after when I got my body fat down to I got down like 5% or something like that. Then I went and I started eating more food and lifting weights. It was like magic time. Here I go and I'm lifting weights and it's like muscle is just coming on like crazy. You know, one piece of advice I always give people whose main goal is to gain muscle is to be in a surplus for a week or two and make sure you throw in a few days of, a, of deficit. Throw in some deficit days or maybe even a fast and then go back to eating in a surplus you know, and watch what happens to your body. But, you know, the old mentality used to be gain as much weight as possible and then carve down the body and get lean. So there would be this this period of, like, you know, eating a shit ton and then we're, we're going to diet now for 12 weeks right. to reveal the body underneath. And you have to, like, take into account how much progress did you actually make with that approach. I mean, you gained a lot of mass, but then when you shred back down and you compare the lean muscle of what you were previous to that... How significant is that? Oh, what you see is you see people put on all this. They put on 20, 30 pounds, and it's almost an even split of fat and muscle. If they're lucky. Yeah, if they're lucky. Sometimes it's more, a lot of times yeah. it's more fat. And even when it is, like let's say it's a, because it's inevitable when you bulk aggressively, like people that are in higher body fat percentages tend to do, it's inevitable you're going to put on body fat and you're going to put on a decent amount. So if you added 10 pounds or 20 pounds, and 50% of it is fat and only and 50% of it is muscle, and then you switch gears and you go to an aggressive lean out or cut or get ready for show, which a lot of these guys do, they end up losing you know, 19 of those 20 pounds and kept one, one pound of muscle. It's like yeah. you did all of that just to gain one pound of muscle that was like so extreme. So much work. So much work, so extreme, so much food, so much stress on the body. Right. That- all all that one. That's why I want to distill it down to that because it's like, you know, if you do like a more reasonable approach with this, like you say, like we're we're trying not to do these excessive bulks because we're just trying to gradually increase. You may actually exceed that one extra pound of lean muscle. I mean, all this stuff is what I really got into when I was competing. Yeah. Like I loved really hacking this and really like tracking volume and strategically barely progressing myself from show over show over show and watching myself literally change my physique and see it grow. If I just, I, okay, I want to put more shoulders on me. Oh, okay, I want more quads. Oh, and then being able to know that, what I want to do, and then what I've been doing, and then to build upon that, I mean, you can very much so very mathematically figure this shit out. And I think that people... Get caught up in what they see a lot of these 
bodybuilders that post on Instagram, it's bulking season or it's shredding season, and they don't do what they do. No, don't. It's not. It's, they're not like you. No, they're not at all. No. And it's not. A, and it's not a good strategy, man. I don't. I don't give a shit how awesome the guy looks on stage. Just because he can make it work doesn't mean it's the. There's a. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat, right? Doesn't mean that this is the most ideal way for the average person who's, especially if you're natural. You know? I had I had a wake-up call years ago through this where I did this really aggressive bulk. And, you know, we I'm in fitness, so we do body fat test calipers. And I remember I, I'd get my body, I don't remember what my body fat percentage was, but I remember, I, I knew what it was before I started the bulk and then I tested afterwards. And then I did the math. And I think I gained like 17 pounds on the scale. And I was... It was very disheartening to see that of that seventeen of that seventeen pounds, something like twelve pounds of body fat. So I gained all this weight for five pounds of lean body mass. And here's the worst part: when I cut down and got lean again, I lost everything. Mm-hmm. I lost the body fat and the and most of the muscle wow. that I gained. It was this long period of time, and I was like, and you know, here's another thing you want to consider: if you put on, if you gain on your body, anybody, just Five to eight pounds of lean body mass. It's significant. People mm-hmm. can tell. You can really tell. I've I recently have put on. I've probably gained about eight pounds on the scale, and I'd say probably six pounds of it's lean body mass. So two pounds of body fat, about six pounds of muscle. People are approaching me at Paleo FX like, dude, what are you doing, man? And it, my, it's not that big of a difference, but lean body mass shows up that way with shape and with the way you look, and yeah. you don't need to gain shit tons of weight on the scale to make that big of a an impact. And you know, if you take your shirt off and you look in the mirror and you're like, well, I'm bigger, but I don't look more muscular, you know, you got to ask yourself well, a question the, like, what the, are you doing? The fear that guys have that, or at least that I had was, you know, when I was trying to quote unquote bulk is I'd be, you know, like, let's say for me, and I've talked about this before that I needed like five, 6,000 calories. So I got, you know, day one, 6,000 calories, day two, 5,500, day three, 6,000, day four, 5,000. And then Day five, fuck, just couldn't, you know, busy, couldn't get there. 2,500 calories. Oh, shit. Scale, <laughs> I see the scale drop three pounds. Holy fuck. I, that muscle that I was working for, three of it just went off. And then stuffing my face afterwards. Or before I go to bed, I'm like shoving all these tacos or whatever I could in my <laughs> mouth so I don't lose this weight the next day. And, but it doesn't work that way. You know what I'm saying? No. Like, uh, that, that scale fluctuation that you see that up mm-hmm. and down most of that is water weight or the actual food that you have yep. inside your body. It is not you know, body fat or muscle that you're seeing swing that hard. Now, I fast. do want to say something here. Now, we're talking about mostly about guys because I rarely ever see a woman who stays in a bulking for too long. Okay? <laughs> yeah. It's usually guys. So I'll say this to the women. Girls cut too long. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of you will benefit from eating a surplus. Yeah. Many of you will benefit greatly from being in a surplus yeah. because you're always so worried about- It's one of about, my favorite things to do with female clients, dude. Yeah. Because a female client that comes to me and she goes, I want to lose 20 pounds. And then I go, okay, cool. Track your food. Let's see where you're at. And then I tell her to eat more. And she's like, whoa, whoa wait a second. You know, you heard me, right? I want to lose weight, right? You want me to eat more food? I'm like, yeah, yeah we're going to eat more food. I, it's it and it flips. and then all of a sudden they build a little bit of muscle yep. and things start to shape mm-hmm. out and all and this happens because I know it fucks with a lot of their heads and I and I always will tell them like I'd like you to do this for a little bit longer but if it's really a struggle for you mentally because you're you're seeing the scale go up right now even though I'm telling you that you're looking good and you're doing fine and our metabolism is starting to ramp up and I like the direction we're going but if you're having a really hard time mentally with it I can show you what you've done already and then I'll drop them a couple hundred calories for a few days in a row and all of a sudden they see this the scale come down and mm-hmm. say so see that like that's you're fine we're okay we can do we have that control anytime we want now and so I love to teach that with my female yep, yep. clients next question is from Rogue N7 I work 7 days on 7 days off 15 hour shifts including a bus ride this doesn't leave enough time on work days to do full MAPS Black foundational workouts. I've got about 30 minutes, and if I go longer, it cuts into my sleep, which is six and a half hours on a good day, but usually five hours. That sounds like prison. Yeah, don't, don't, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't replace sleep for exercise, no. so, so don't do that. Uh, uh, so this is a very non-common situation. This is a, a special situation. So in this case... I'm going to make some recommendations that are specific to you. I like this, I don't know very many I like this question because even though this is really rare that somebody has what seven calls a swing shift what was this no, called? No no I think a, a swing is like a between a, a night uh, uh what you call it 
right? Mm. Swing is the between the a regular nine to five and the, the and, night the, and then the oh, night I shift, see. right? That's what a swing shift is. The seven on seven off though is I, what, why I wanted to answer this because even though that's an extreme. Uh, I know a lot of firefighters, and I know a lot of co- like they, some run three on, three off, do mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, a lot of firefighters. And so this. I think the message, even though it could be, a, it's going to be a little bit different. The overall message that you, we would say to all those people is probably similar to the same. Which Sal hit it right away. Never would I trade working out uh, for sleep. Mm-hmm. I mean that that that's is, not going to benefit. You. That's a bigger rock. Mm-hmm. I mean we just we 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 just recently talked about um, you know uh, Ben Greenfield's wife who doesn't lift weights but once a week and looks fucking phenomenal. So you don't need to train, you know, every other day just to to look great. Right. And you definitely don't want to be doing that if your body is taxed already from a 15-hour day and only 5 hours of sleep. Right? I would say the week, the 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 week that you work, I would just be active, maybe do a 15-minute light, you know, workout on those days. And then on the 7 days off, that's when you hit it hard. And then you get more sleep. Uh, so make sure you get more sleep, you eat really good, and then I would go after it in the gym. And I would go after it hard enough where it would take me the following seven days to kind of recover and do mobility and stuff like that. And so basically what it's going to look like for you is a week of harder, longer workouts with more sleep and a week of you know less sleep because you're working so much with short 15, 20-minute you know, low-intensity type workouts. And I think the body will probably respond okay doing it oh, that I, way. Oh, I actually yeah, think, for sure. honestly, I mean, okay, if you're following like a MAPS protocol, which is typically a three to four day a week type of a routine, I mean, I think he could actually work work out six days a week on the days up when he's day, he has his days off and get close to the same benefits as if he was. Here's the thing. Time is made up. <laughs> time doesn't exist, people. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way. So if you looked at it like a overarching thing of this, okay, Instead of looking at it seven, seven and seven, look at it over the next thirty days. Your total workouts, and so anyone who's wa- has watched my Insta story, you've just seen me go day one, day two, day three. I'm on like day sixteen or something like that. Like it's not following a two day a week, a three day a week, a four day a week type of a regimen. I'm just counting up all of the times I get a chance to work out this month, and when I look at this coming up next month. I'll go back and I'll look at the total volume that I made that I did in that month and I'll slightly build upon it this month going forward. And that might look like one week I might just be on it and get 5 days in a 5 days I might work out. And then we might go travel to Austin and I might only work out one day, which is what happened. But it won't stop me from building upon the volume that I created from the previous month, which is the same way that I would coach and treat someone like this is I wouldn't look at it as a week to week thing. I would look at it as more like a monthly snapshot and look at your total amount of workouts that you accomplished in that month and I would slowly build upon that and I would ch- I would take advantage of the days that I have off of work to actually get that to increase that yeah, volume. The thing to consider is context matters. So I, what happens I think a lot of times in situations like this is people will say you know, isn't it less ideal to work out that way? Wouldn't it be more ideal if I could do sure three? But but in this situation, it wouldn't be right. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Context matters. In this situation, you're working fifteen hour days, seven days a week. You're getting maybe six and a half, five to six and a half hours of sleep a day on those days, which is not much. Most people need at least seven or closer to eight. So, in the context of this. It wouldn't be more beneficial to try and follow the normal protocol. It'd be more beneficial for you to follow a an abbreviated one or, or something that's a little more you know specific to you, like the one we just explained. So context matters quite a bit. And I, you know, it's funny because people will th- will they'll hear what's ideal, and they'll think, oh, I have to do this right, right. ideal yeah. to maximize How do I fit my this in. Yeah. yeah, instead of like rearranging and restructuring what you know, you can actually accomplish based off of like, you know, the ter- the determining schedule and the way that everything's arranged. And, um, you know, and you, you can still treat like the, the days in between. If you do like a lighter or a moderate workout, you can still hit those same movements just, you know, to keep that signal alive and, you know, just look at it a little bit differently. And, you know, because your, your body's already super stressed and, and, you know, and you're in a, in a position now where um, this is like sort of the recover act, almost active recovery, and then we go right back into the to the meat of the workouts. You know, the following week. Yeah, who was it? I think it was Paul that told us we had an interview with Paul while we were at Paleo with a lot of 
uh, in great well, he information. He talked all about stress. But he, you know, he said, you know, if you're a trainer, you when you a coach, what you really are is you you understand how to apply and uh, you know manipulate stress because that's what mm-hmm. that's what exercise is. Mm-hmm. I'm applying a stress on your body. Your body responds, reacts, it adapts. You know, build muscle, burn body fat, whatever. But it, you have to you have to also understand that there's a lot of other stresses that you're playing with, and so your your job as a trainer is to know when to apply the right amount of stress and to look at the context of the individual. In this particular situation, when you're working for seven days, 15 hours a day, and you're not getting much sleep, there's already a lot of stress being thrown on your body. So knowing that, I'm only going to be, I only have enough room for a little bit of stress, a little Mm -hmm. bit of 15 minute, 20 minute Mm -hmm. mobility sessions. But then the seven days where you're off, where you can sleep nine hours if you want, you can cook your meals, you can relax a little bit more. You can devote more time to working out. You can recover faster. Well, now I know I've got more stress I can play with. Mm-hmm. And so rather than, you know, you're in your situation, it's going to look like, although the stress levels are high each time, one week, a lot most of your stress is coming from work and lack of sleep. And the next week, it's coming from your workouts. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Just manage it and play with it based on your context. And that'll be the best scenario or situation that you can do for yourself. Otherwise, you know, uh, of course, a better scenario would be to more, be more consistent on a weekly basis. But if you try to apply that philosophy to yourself with your current schedule, you will crash and burn. Yeah, I no. promise you. And I think it's important, too, that if it's, we're not giving you like um, a reason to just like, oh, cool, the guy said I don't need to do anything on those seven days because I'm not getting whatever, like – Learn to look at each one of these days. Like you, you know, if it's a lot of movement at work, you know, if you've been mm-hmm. sedentary, and that's how I would decide if I'm going to do some trigger sessions or do any more activity is based off of what that looks like. Yeah. I do this all the time, where I'm plan like today. I plan to lift today, but let's say today, like we ended up having to get up at four in the morning and we had to go do a bunch of shit and we're moving around. So that, and it's like one o'clock time, which is when I'd probably try and get my workout in. And I look down and I'm like, fuck it, man, I'm tired. We got up. I didn't get very much sleep last night. We've already got like 12, 15,000 steps in. I, and even though I was planned and scheduled to work out, I might not work out. I might go, you know what? I'll work out tomorrow. I'll work out tomorrow. I've already applied a stress to my body today. I already lacked a little bit of sleep. I already moved more than normal. Even though my workout was planned, if I was going to take off a day, this is not a bad day to take off. And now I'll just move that workout that I was planning on doing that day over to the next day when I know that I'm definitely not going to get up that early. I'm going to have adequate sweet sleep and I'm probably not going to move very much. So, you know, that's. And the irony of it is you get better results. Right. You, you yeah, actually yeah, build more muscle and burn more body fat right. and True. get a bit stronger. Next question is from O'Rourke Q. As Mind Pump continues to grow and become bigger, more successful, and more stressful, Will the studio adopt the University of Utah's st- solution and install a cry closet? <laughs> and a cry closet? Who's first? Yeah, have you guys, did, you, have, did you hear what about the this? Hell is that? You no. haven't seen this? So the University this of is Utah. Hilarious, maybe bro. Doug can pull up the article. Yeah, pull it up. Doug. Yeah, pull this has up. Has a what the fuck? This a, is a room hilarious. That it started as a project. I think it was like is a, that. What it was? I think a student did it almost like it was. I don't think they intended it for it to turn turn out the way it really turned out. It's like a joke that's just like. T- took off. It was a student project they did, and I don't know if they were testing a hypothesis or whatever, but it it really started to gain some traction, and now it's become this thing where they have kept it on the campus, and I think they're already talking about certain places are starting to follow suit. Is that? Um, we'll see when Doug pulls <laughs> yeah, this Yeah, let's, let's see. Let's, so the idea is that they built this standalone closet right there. There's the picture of it right there. And... I think you're allowed. It's meant to provide a like soundproof at least. Yeah. Look, at, look, at, look at this. The space is meant to provide a place for students uh, studying for finals to take a short 10 minute break. So they have a special closet in the middle of the library, it looks like, that they call the cry closet. You know, really? What are we doing, man? I don't know. What are <laughs> we doing? To, we're we're going to listen. These are the fucking future leaders. Yeah. The, uh, is that uh, how we're supposed to deal with? You, we're fucked. Yeah, we're gonna be so fucked if this stress. If, yeah, if kids like this who grow up thinking every time they're a little bit stressed out or a little sad or whatever that they need. It. Oh, by the way, inside the closet, it's there's stuffed evoke animals. Evoke such a crazy like emotional outburst. Yeah, there, there's there's stuffed animals and shit in there too to, to make you comfortable. <laughs> there's safe of spaces. There is. There's safe spaces and safe zones and schools and what are we preparing these kids for? Corporate jobs Nothing. don't do this shit. Could you imagine There's you no go work for a company 
and you're like to your boss your boss is like listen you did a bad job you, you you didn't do the report the right way whatever and you're like where's the where's the room i could go cry in like excuse me what yeah. it, what does the rules say doug i can't read them from here it says rules of the the cry closet <laughs> there's rules don't to talk the, about i the think cry you closet. only get 10 minutes That's in there thing. a safe place for stressed out students otherwise known as the cry closet the space is meant to provide a place for students studying for finals to take a 10 short 10 minute break Rules of the closet. Knock before entering. I know what I'd do in that closet if I was in there. I'd be like, me me and my girlfriend need to go. The closet's shaking. What's going on in there? We need to go in here and cry for a second. I need to to cry real hard. Uh, What is it? What is the second one? Only one person in the closet. You're fucked. You're fucked because of rule two. At a time. But when she she needs comfort, I need comfort. Maybe I could do some alone time. Limit your time in the closet to no more than 10 minutes. Turn, what does that say? Turn lights. Yeah, turn lights and, and timer. timer off before leaving. There's a timer. Mm. It sounds like timeout. Yeah, it does sound like timeout. Yeah, use, uh, what is that? What does the, that word say? Hashtag cry closet you of you if posting on social media. Oh, so they encourage oh, you wow. to share you it. You want to share that you're doing that? Wow. Uh, why? Why would I, you? Is, it's got to be a can joke. We, oh, can we, no, no, no. Whatever. Let's get the, ha- let's look at the hashtag right this now. Is, this this is, has got to be a joke. This is no, just, no, no. Let's look at the hashtag. Doug, give me the hashtag one more time, please. Yeah. It's cry closet you of you. University of Utah. You know, here's the thing. People get stressed out. There's difficult situations. There's nothing wrong with, you know, being sad or crying or stressed out, but- People aren't going to always provide for you the tools to deal with the shit. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So like you're not going to be in a situation where, where a school is going to provide you with a closet to cry in or a safe space or whatever. So okay, these I, kids I need to learn. They need to learn how to I do got, this shit themselves. I, I got to read this for you. So here, I'm looking at all. So there's a lot of, not a lot. There's a handful, about 50 or so people already starting to use this. And this is a you know person posting on their, their, their uh, post or on Instagram. Hashtag cry closet uh, university, whatever, is a bold new form of self care. I'm going to form an a, an NGO and place these cry boxes where people can use them. Nothing is harder than being a rich American in college. This will complement the yoga and beauty I plan to bring there. Bring there my nonprofit Helping Hands International. It's got to be a joke. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a very joke, sarcastic. Dude. I think they're making fun of the the whole you know like super sensitive millennial. Well, there's a whole blog on I it. I kind of so. hope so. There's a there's a whole blog on it that this kid wrote, uh, the picture that Doug just showed of him, and I I don't know, dude. I don't think it's a joke, dude. I think it's a joke, but I think it's a joke. It's based a reflection on, on yeah. parenting. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, listen. I mean, when you're a comedians, don't go to colleges anymore to to perform. A lot of them don't. It's crazy because the, the students get so offended with. Did you? Okay, here here's a good example of uh, and, and I partially I blame. The avail- the ability for anybody to have a voice nowadays. So now, you know, idiots can say what they want to say. Bro, this this is very real. He j- here's here's a tweet from a news reporter who actually interviewed him <laughs> on Channel Five for his cry closet. He can't believe the response that he's getting. It's bro, ridiculous. It's real. Yeah. So did you guys hear about this? There was a girl that went to prom, and she took prom pictures and posted a picture of herself wearing. You know, like a uh, like Asian themed dress. Okay, very nice looking type of dress. Oh God, it's gonna be cultural appropriation. Yes, Let me guess. some dudes like, how dare you? You know, use our culture. You know, uh, steal our culture for your whatever, whatever. And what the fuck? Like, and he did get hammered. He got hammered on Twitter by other people. Yeah. But really, you're gonna. Yeah. You know what you used to call it back in the day? That was like flattering. Like, yeah. oh, you like our style like, and you want to- Oh, nice. You like our style. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Like, it's it's a nice look on you. Dude, go to any restaurant in America. Find one that's fucking original American food. I know. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's silly. That's you all how- Mexican food is really Mexican food? Yeah. It's, it's like, it's, 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 I don't know. It's weird. I feel like everybody's getting their feelings hurt all the time. Uh, it's and, just, and, that, that's exactly what it is. And that's what this is. This is encouraging it. It's not that I have, I, I have a problem with people like spending time, like getting their feelings hurt and crying about it. Like that's, that's a normal, like human emotion. It's just that we're encouraging, like there's this like, l- like physical space where we need to just ah, like, 
like it become i don't know like it, it, it like we're not dealing with it in a way where like it's productive like it's it's just it's it seems like it's 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 more regressive than progressive well why do we need to cry in a closet just toughen up why, a little bit just why, toughen why, up why do we need to cry in a closet yeah. i mean why not cry have you got to cry yeah, just cry. cry yeah exactly i mean think Thank of, you. think of how much how much healthier that probably is to to be able to teach yourself to be able to cry in public when you have yeah, when you're you have, hiding from other people seeing you right, why right and that's what I think is a problem is we're still, we're feeding into this, you know, isolated uh, mm -hmm. culture of, you know, that we only can connect and talk to each other via has hashtag, you know, go cry in your closet and hashtag it and talk about it there because yeah. it's too weird to actually cry in public and talk to your friends about oh, it. Oh, you're so right. Like, uh, you know, I could talk about it on social media, but I can't talk to physical people. That's about what it. I mean. Like, yeah. That's you why, know, you that's know, why I think this is, is stupid and yeah. ridiculous. Well, here's what I, here's totally what I think too. Regressive. You, I don't, I, look, when we were younger, and now, even now, as but by out, the way, we're actually having one installed next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Doug cries a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Adam's fault. Uh, and Taylor would be the first one to use it. By the way, hundred percent Taylor. 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 Oh, Taylor. Yeah. Well, Mister Mister Sensitive. Here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Poor Taylor. I know when I was younger, and and we're like this now as men. But when I was younger with my buddies. Something that men do this in particular, we test each other. Yes. And we fuck with each other and yes. we play pranks on each other and we it make makes you stronger. And I'll and, and you know what we're doing? We're trying to see if you can handle Some shit. Some people call that bullying. Yeah. And that's what it's they called do. nowadays. They do. It's just crazy to me. That's what it's called nowadays. But you know, that's my friends and I do that like forever, ever since I was a little kid. And that, what it you know, it you just learn how to navigate through it and deal with it and and you, you understand the intent behind what people say. And that's where we're like, we're completely just disregarding people's intent anymore. And we're, we're, we're taking everything at face value of just like word said. Dude, I have a cousin whose nickname is Bones because he's skinny, right? That was, that's what we, that, to this day, we call him Bones. That's his nickname. You know how many kids today, if they, you know, came to hang out with their friends and they're like, hey, what's up, Bones? <gasps> oh my God. Cry he called me, my, you know, he called me Bones. Like, yeah. It's... What's up, short stack? It, yeah. it, look, it, I, short like if you're being spirited and all that, I get that. But you got to – life is fucked. It can be hard. Yeah. You yeah. got to learn how to toughen up a little bit, man. You don't always have a cry closet to go do you, into. Do you think this is something yeah. that was uh, – that we've evolved well, nature. We'll to have we inside of us to like to test to see like all, yes. going all the way back to like, okay, here's four of us in this room right now and you know we're going to have – some of us are going to have to hunt and kill. Yep. And I want to know That's that – That's the theory. Uh, isn't that the theory? That's the theory that, that especially among men, we test each other mm -hmm. to see how we'll handle stressful situation. And when we see that you can ha think about it this way, when you meet a new, when you meet a new guy, let's say you're with your group of friends and a new guy comes into the group and people start poking at him. The way he handles it will determine whether or not everybody we accept him. That's it. Yep, yep. If he can handle a joke and he can give it back to you and everybody laughs and nobody gets offended, we do that. I see it all the time. You know what I'm saying? But if he's that guy, help it. yeah. If he's that guy that comes in and you make a joke and he gets all offended and huffy and like, Ooh, you hurt my feelings. Yeah. Like everybody's like, all right, that see you later. And it's because you're testing. Right, he's for sure gonna get eaten. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The put, saber tooth tiger is <laughs> gonna have a lunch. Yeah, yeah. That pussy's getting eaten for oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> oh shit. They're not. They're not. They're 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 demonstrating that they can't handle. Those stressful, stressful situations. This is all. This is all parenting's fault. I mean, parents do everything for their kids now. They don't let yeah. them get hurt. They don't let them keep score because God forbid they lose. No. Everybody get. Everybody did a great Nothing's job. Negative. Yeah. Always, always positive. Yeah. Everybody did a great job. Listen, when my kids do a bad job, you know, I'm not gonna lie to them. I'm not no. gonna be like, yeah, listen, you, you were super lazy, dude. They don't learn shit. I'm gonna tell them, like, listen, you know, you know why you got a bad grade. Cause you didn't fucking study and you're acting lazy, and so That's now you got. I'm not gonna tell him like, well, you did a good job. Yeah, maybe go. No, maybe, maybe go to the closet yeah. and cry a little bit. Yeah. Then no, come back did, talk to dad. You did a yeah. shitty job. That's okay too. That you did a shitty job. Just it's just you got you got to face reality. You did a shitty job. Oh, your team lost. Your team lost. You know why you lost? Because you could have done better. The other yeah. team was better. More practice. Yeah, just just deal with that. That's reality. This is real. Now, what are you going to do with that? So you're, I'm seeing, like, I'm reading his Instagram. And there's like all these students that are supporting him and jumping on board. Like, what a brilliant idea! Anybody who who's gone through school right now in finals so, oh, knows that how hard so and crazy hard. and challenging it is. And I and so what I think of like this is like. Okay, and I'm and okay. I never, I didn't finish college, so this is really tough for me to speak on. And maybe Justin can chime yeah. in more because he finished. But I can't, I can't imagine that you know finals is the toughest thing that no, you're no, going no, to no, face no, no. In, no. in real life. In like, fact, I can't even think of finals being 
in the top five or ten things being that you're going to face in the real world. Yeah. I mean, would you say that, Justin? Or oh, absolutely. You... I mean, it's... And not to say that finals isn't hard. No, I'm... it was hard. It was grueling, right? Yeah. And, and you know, on top of that, like me just, I don't know. I, I had like a job on top of that, and I also played football, and I just had like a lot. I had a lot going on. There's plenty of opportunity for mental breakdown, you right. know? Um, but I just, looking back at it, there's all this extra time. Everything is about you. Um, you know, like what's the worst that's going to happen? Like I got to explain to my parents that I did, a, I did poorly on this final. Right. Oh shit. Yeah. You know, like, come on. Right. Sack up. Yeah. This is, <laughs> you it, it's an exhibition. It, it, it's like an art install installation that they put up, but it is for use, but it's a reflection of kind of the, the, the temperature at the universities where people get, they it's can't getting, handle alternate opinions. They can't handle. Well, it's great proving ground. I mean, everybody has to go through a process of like, um, I don't know, like adversity. Yeah, it's an adver adversity for me. Like, I look at my journey, like even just leaving out of my comfort zone and going to Chicago itself as being insanely hard. Like that was like, it. It's almost like a man's journey. If it's a woman's journey, like whatever it is, like it's all about becoming who you are. Like you have to understand what it takes to make it on your own and be an individual and you know, when we coddle this whole process, you never really get to understand that. You never get to find who you really are going to be. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, if you go to the app store, you can download the mind pump media app and you can search for any topic, including the cry closet, including the cry closet. <laughs> and it'll pull up all the episodes that we talk about that particular put topic. Some infrared in there for them. At least. It's a free app. It's mind pump media. Thank you for listening to mind pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>